We are back with the next two-on-one installment. Is this going to be the one where I finally lose? You will have to wait and see. So our competitors today are Jerry and Neil. Both of these guys are amazing players. Both of them play pro level tournaments and have wins over some of the top players in the world. So my work is going to be cut out for me today if I want any chance of winning this match. If you haven't previously seen these two-on-one series that are leading up to this one, I would really suggest you go back and watch those to kind of get a sense for how we got to where we are. If you have seen the previous ones, what you probably noticed as a pattern in a lot of those previous matches was me working to get up to the kitchen line and then attacking basically as soon as I could in a point. Against a 5-0 and below type player, I kind of took the approach that if I could get up to the line, get in close quarters, and then initiate attack, that I could win the hands battle. And that would not allow the two players to just basically run me around the court. The problem that I have in this match is Jerry and Neil both have really good hands. So that strategy is kind of out the window for this match. I'm gonna have to work and earn every point that I get. I'm not just gonna be able to pick any ball and speed it up. So early on in this first match, I was having a bit of a tough time because my margins are so small. I've gotta make sure every shot I hit is applying a lot of pressure. If I just play a regular shot into the court, these guys are gonna be able to take control of the point and then I'm gonna be on defense and they're good enough that they're gonna be able to maintain control and eventually run me around and finish off the point. So the balance here is I have to apply a lot of pressure but do that with a very high level of consistency. And basically in this first game, I just wasn't doing that. And I was trying to apply a lot of pressure and I was missing by trying to do that. I was missing some returns, I was missing easy shots. So I was able to get a stop at 210 to keep them from winning that game. I had a little mental chat with myself and decided I was gonna try to get my act together a little bit. And I was able to go on a little bit of a run. So you can see here, I started making a few more balls. I started gaining control of the point. And with that, you build a little bit of confidence. Uh, also, they start to feel the pressure a little bit. So maybe they start to go closer to the lines, but all those things kind of equaled out to, I was able to put a little bit of a run together. I was able to get it to 5-10 and then they ended up getting the ball back on a side out. I knew these were a couple big points. If I could get a stop here, and get the ball back one more time, I could probably you know, make a, another little push. So this was a huge point for me to get this stop. And then I got a little uh, third shot drop, gift error from Neil, and now I got the ball back. So let's keep making a run here. All right, here we go. So we we're at 210, now we're all the way back to 910. These guys have to be feeling the pressure. Honestly, I wasn't too upset with the way I played these couple points at 910, but uh, Jerry and Neil just stepped it up and made a couple tough shots in a kind of a big spot in the match to get that ball back again. So mentally right now I'm thinking, if I can get one more side out at 910, if I get the ball back, I'm gonna win this game with all this momentum. So I knew this was a big point right here. Jerry hit a great drive. I was full stretch, kind of falling into the kitchen. Neil was able to finish it. And despite my best efforts to make a comeback, they pulled out game one, 11-9.
So you can see early on in game two, you can see uh, more examples of kind of what I talked about in game one. I was having to work really hard for points. I was hitting what I thought were some pretty good attacks, but their hands are so good that um, if it wasn't perfect, you know, they're getting that ball back and making shots that, that really none of the people I'd played up to this point in these two-on-ones were making. Score-wise, the game was going very similar to the first game. I felt like I was playing some pretty good points, but it's just too difficult to win that many points. So they jumped out to an early lead again because I was pressing a little too much, trying to hit perfect shots, uh, making some errors, giving them a little freebies. And the points I was winning, I feel like I had to hit, you know, four or five good shots in one point just to win the point. Just like in game one, I got on a bit of a roll, started to find some rhythm a little bit towards the middle of the game. Had a, had a couple really good points in a row, a couple good shots. Um, this is a good one that we're watching right now. And then I had a nice forehand, inside and forehand coming up right here. I was able to get it to 6-9. And then this backhand right here was kind of a killer. Felt like I played another really good point, had a good look at a backhand, crushed it clipped off the tape went wide instead of seven nine serving now I gotta I gotta try to side this out again here we are with Jerry and Neil's second opportunity for a match point just kind of sums up the whole match I'm gonna hit an ill-advised speed up at the wrong time Neil's ready for it, makes me pay the price, and that's that. The two-on-one run is officially over. Hope you enjoyed the video. I will see you next time. Thanks.